Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Christopher Aaron. It is the 7th of June, 2017. Gold is attempting a major breakout, and we will cover all of the action tonight. I think if there's one video that you have watched in the last year, this will be the most important one. Let's look at it. Gold. We have looked at this chart many times over the last several months. Gold has been in a triangular-shaped consolidation. Of course, we know this consolidation has an upper trend line which dates back to 2011. So six years, that is an important time frame. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and watch the last video. We discussed that at length. We are seeing right here, which looks like an attempt at a breakout. You can see that very clearly above this long-term downtrend. Now, if this line was only a year long as we see here, it would be a less significant breakout. However, we are talking about a downtrend that goes back, as I said, to 2011. So this is a major, major breakout attempt. And I'm calling it an attempt right now because you never want to get too excited on just the first day or so of a breakout. Now, there is a negative signal. There are a few negative signals that I am studying right now. I'm not going to get into them right here, but they have to do with the negative, the weakness that we've seen in the precious metals mining complex. And then I'm also going to get into another one, the weakness that we've seen across the commodity complex, the rest of the commodity complex. I'm going to look at that in just a moment. So the point of me mentioning that right here and right now is to say we have on the chart, on the main gold chart, we have a breakout that is attempting to unfold. But we have other signals that we are monitoring that are giving some red flags. They're giving some warning signals. So a breakout, when you see a breakout like this happen, you have to see this hold. The general frame that is given is you would like to see this hold for three days. Three days, that's kind of arbitrary. I would say a week is even better. And especially given that one week from today, there is an important Fed meeting. They're expected to raise interest rates for the third, uh, excuse me, the fourth time in the last year and a half, this will be the fourth interest rate rise in the last 10 years. So you would like to see if you're a precious metals bull right now, which I assume you are if you're watching this, you want to see this breakout hold here for at least the next week. You do not want to see gold reverse from a breakout such as this. There are some bearish, very bearish possibilities which could happen if gold reverses here and negates this breakout. So what do I expect? If this holds through next Wednesday, through the Fed meeting especially, I think you're going to see a, a continuation of this advance right here up to this level between 1310 and 1330. This is the reversal you can see this right here, this spike higher and then reversal. So we're talking about the upper wick of this candle above the previous closes here. This happened on November 9th, Trump's victory. What happened on that day? Gold spiked higher in a fear reaction and then sold completely off below that. The highest single volume day in gold futures trading history. So yes, we are talking about the paper markets, but the paper markets do impact the physical markets to a large extent. So if gold continues higher here and solidifies this breakout through next Wednesday, we're going to be looking for gold to form a short term high in this resistance zone as holders from the November high sell and they will there are a lot of them that are still underwater they will be selling in this region so you will form a short-term top 
from 1310 to 1330, the price will back off. If we legitimize this breakout here and the price backs off, this will be the most important buying opportunity I forecast of the next three years. Because you will have a legitimate breakout that comes back and retests its trend line. And from there, I believe we will see an advance that is equal to the advance that we saw in the first half of 2016. You'll have a consolidation pattern, an inherently neutral pattern that is broken out higher. Once the retest occurs, you can expect roughly an advance equal to the amplitude of the original surge. This will be a huge advance that will be setting up between the retest in the third quarter of this year and approximately six to 12 months after this time period. Now, the red flag. We've seen the weakness in the mining sector over the last several months. I'm going to look at the commodity complex in a moment. If this breakout fails, if it does not hold the 1280 region over the next day or two, especially through next Wednesday, the Fed meeting, I would say watch out because you've got a rising short-term trend line here. This is looking unstable to me. This is looking toppy. It's looking like it wants to break down. It wants to at least test this line one more time. It's uh, This is a, uh, it looks like a three sort of peaks here. It's almost a slanted head and shoulders type looking pattern. And if that were to fail, in other words, if the price were to reverse lower below 1280 at any point in the next week, and this line here were to fail, you have a target that is lower than the rising trend here from the low at 1045. This is based on the amplitude of the largest portion of this advance right here, $90 amplitude. Subtract that from what would be a breakdown point and you would have a target of 1140 right here, which would break this pattern to the downside, which then gets really ugly for the precious metals uh, into the next year or so. So there are two extreme possibilities and this should be expected. This is exactly what happens after a consolidation of this length. You know, we're going on almost a year and a half now that gold has been forming this triangular pattern. This could continue for another couple of weeks, a few months. But after a consolidation, an inherently neutral consolidation such as this, you will have a strong move in one way or another. Okay, so it won't just be a continuous grind uh, for the next three years. There's going to be a major move coming up. And we're getting this first hint that it wants to move higher. But I've got a few things that I'm looking at that are telling me that there is reason for caution. Looking at gold over the last couple of days. So here was the breakout, okay, right here in Asia. Uh, thank you, gold purchasers in Sydney and in Hong Kong for causing the spike above 1280. That was the initial resistance level we were looking for. A follow through on Tuesday. Now, a weaker day today, right? So you have what is attempting to be a major breakout of a six year decline. And it could not sustain that breakout for more than one day. It could not build on that for more than one day. That's not what I want to see from a technical standpoint. A breakout of that magnitude, I would want to see a surge higher and then a surge for many days to follow before some sort of a consolidation forms. So here's the first warning that I have. This is not, this is not done yet. The critical level that I'm watching is 1280. Okay, I want to see that hold. So far it is held. But it's a warning that we've seen this weakness only one 
day, one one full trading day after the breakout on Sunday night in Asia. Switching over to look at silver, here's a second bit of a warning. So silver not following gold, not making a new high for this move that could be sustained at any rate. A slight new high on Tuesday and then giving back all of that and closing back into uh, Sunday's range here. So one of the signals that I am watching right now is the action in the broad commodity complex. Let me bring up this chart here. So this is the same time scale that we were looking at the gold chart. We're looking at the CRB commodity index. For anyone who's not familiar with this term, the CRB commodity index is a basket of commodities. I believe right now it includes uh, 19 commodities. This includes gold, silver, the rest of the, uh, the primary precious metals, platinum, palladium. This includes the industrial metals, copper, aluminum, zinc. This includes the energy complex. It's highly weighted in the energy complex, oil. This includes natural gas. This includes the agricultural complex, including a lot of the, um, the soft commodities, the, uh, the food commodities, sugar, corn, orange juice. So we're looking at a basket of all these commodities. And pay attention to this rise, okay, from the bottom in 2016, this strong rise in the entire commodity complex, right, through June. Compare that for a moment to the gold chart, right? Same strong rise. Let's get rid of that for a second. So there is a strong correlation between the broad commodity complex and the gold price, and even more so to the silver price. Now, this is not to say that gold and silver and the rest of the commodities will always move in the same direction, but for certain parts of the moves, yes, gold and silver will be grouped together with the rest of the commodity complex. And right now what we're seeing is what looks to be the beginning of a breakdown in the rest of the commodity complex. Below the support level here between 176 and 179 that has held for the better part of the last year. You can see one, two, three, four, five attempts at that and we're looking at a breakdown today. So gold, gold tends to do really well at holding up when something's going on in the world um, a geopolitical event or extreme currency debasement, high inflation, gold tends to outperform in those instances. But when nothing like that is going on, what you have then is institutional fund managers that will decide to sell the entire commodity complex and gold will get pulled down with that. So this breakdown, what looks to be happening right now in the broad commodity complex is happening at the same time as gold is attempting to break out from a six year downtrend. So we can see the headwinds that gold is facing. If it, if it sustains this breakout, if gold really sustains this breakout, especially through the end of next Wednesday, the Fed meeting, it will be showing extreme relative strength given the weakness we've seen here in the commodity complex. All I'm saying is this is somewhat of a red flag. This is a second red flag giving me sign for caution that perhaps gold may not be quite ready to sustain that quite yet. Quite yet. Let's zoom this out, this commodity complex out. We were just looking at this. And what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that the broad commodity complex, we we're talking about that weakness. Yes, weakness over the course of the last several months and potentially breaking down below the support level again. Even so, we are talking about the lowest prices for broad commodities as an average that we have seen 
in the last 42 years. So dating back to 1975, commodities are the cheapest that they have been in that time frame. So I would say that if, if gold fails to break out at this point, because the rest of the commodity sector is dragging it down and there's a period of weakness, I would say that it's very important to understand the difference between a short-term decline that could result in a significant loss, especially if you're heavily invested in futures contracts or the miners, which are highly leveraged to the price of gold. If the commodity complex breaks down, these miners could drop 40 or 50% in the matter of a couple of months. Very important to understand the difference between that and what we're talking about here, which is the looking of a long-term bottom forming in the commodity complex at similar levels over the last 40 years. So with another part of my investments, what I am doing right now, and I'm not trading this, I'm accumulating positions in the oil market. Oil is a major component of the commodity complex. I'm actually accumulating uh, midstream distribution companies in the oil complex pipelines and manufacturing companies at these levels. I'm not trading this. I'm not looking to sell this anytime soon. For that matter, if it goes lower, if oil and the rest of the commodity complex goes lower, I mean, how much lower can it go from 42 year lows, right? So I would say if it goes lower, if oil falls back down to 35 or 30, wonderful. I'm accumulating even more. So I would say that this can play an important impact on the gold market as well. And this is where it is very important to understand the difference between if you're a highly leveraged investor, if you have discretionary money that you're betting on the nugget or the JNUG, or money that you really can't afford to lose right now, there is a lot of risk here if gold reverses lower at this point. This could lead to a serious washout, a final washout in the price of gold. We're watching this, especially over the next week, 1280 being the key level to watch. If you are another form of investor, the most important thing, as was said at the great temple of Apollo at Delphi in ancient Greece, the most important thing being to know thyself. So if you are a stacker or if you are investing in the mining sector, but you're doing so from a longer term basis, and that means you're accumulating positions, let's say every quarter or every month, and you intend to do that for the next couple of years, and we get this failure here and a final washout which could very well follow i would say this is an excellent time to be accumulating not only in the precious metals but in the rest of the commodity complex as we are at 42 year lows now if this breakout sustains over the next week and we see a reversal at the trump resistance and a retest, I would look to get highly leveraged as a trader and as a speculator myself, someone who likes to attempt to make significant profits over a short period of time because if this breakout holds, the move that is going to come is going to result in some of these miners going up by 100 or 200 or 300% over the next year if gold sustains this breakout. So what I'm saying is the technical action over the next week is probably the most important to watch um, at any point since the 2015 bottom. I can't give you 100%. I can tell you the signals that I'm watching. We've been seeing relative weakness in the gold mining complex. We've been seeing weakness in the commodity complex. We've seen gold attempting to break out here. Which one will... Will it be? I say watch very closely 
Know thyself. Know if you are a stacker who would welcome weakness in the metals or if you are perhaps over leveraged in futures or in the mining sector. Know that because that will determine what the best course of action is for you. The premium research that I publish comes out once per week. We show charts like this. We show many other charts. We are looking at the currencies, especially the US dollar. We are looking at the bond market. We're looking at the rest of the commodity complex and the mining sector and silver in detail every week. I also do individual consultations. If you would like an independent analysis on your perspective, you can find more on that on the website. I do thank you for joining me tonight. This is a very exciting time, and I'll see you this time next week.